Well, hello, all you raw food rehabbers. It is hump day, week two, day three of our raw rehab experiment. And um, I woke up this morning thinking a lot about holistic and natural health versus the traditional medicine that most of us grew up with, like MDs and, um, you know, internal med medicine doctors. And how I am venturing to guess that the majority of you guinea pigs that are here with me on this experiment have at some point or another been disillusioned by Western medicine. And I know I have. But on the other hand, I wanted to say um, that I haven't lost all faith in it. And I think a lot of us who are in the natural health genre kind of get all up in arms about m medical doctors and we get mad about them because they don't know, they don't know how to treat our diseases. I mean, they want to just throw pills at us. And so it, it is very frustrating, especially um, for someone like, I'll just use myself as an example. I mean, back in my early 20s, I had a yeast infection for 11 months. And I took everything. Back then they had a medication called Nystatin, which was so gross. It was this yellow powder that I had to mix with something and take every day. And I mean, 11 months of a yeast infection. And I know there's some guys out there, and you guys, I don't, I don't know what to compare it to, maybe a really bad case of jock itch. But, I mean, it's just no good, ladies, if you've had one. And you can imagine 11 months of uh, the Wonder Bread Factory going on. Mm -mm. I mean, I was desperate. Desperate for answers and no doctor. I went to doctor after doctor and nobody could help me with it. And so I finally found this quack in Choctaw, Oklahoma, Dr. William K. Philpot. And I think the guy's still alive and he's still doing, practicing. Um, I forgot what he called himself. But within a week and a half of going to Dr. Quack Philpot, my yeast infection was gone. And I actually think that is probably where I very first heard about colonics. And one of the things he did is he would hook me up to an IV every morning, and it had organic germanium, if you've ever heard of that. It's kind of like COQ10 or whatever, coenzyme Q10, where you're, you're basically pumping oxygen into your bloodstream. It was super, super high doses of vitamin C. Um, he would he would give it to me up to the point when my bowels would start to really get loose, and then he would back down just a little bit. So I was getting, you know, oxygen, vitamin C, and Lord only knows what else he was putting into me. Totally changed my diet. Um, I was That's when I found out that I had a lactose intolerance. And so things started, the puzzle started to kind of come together at that point. And I think I was 21 or 22 at that time. Um, you know, and too young. I was too young to really take that and run with it. I mean, I could be doing what I'm doing now 20 years ago, but, you know, I still had my wild oats and partying that I needed to get out of my system, I guess, and I suffered for it all. But um, so that was, that was around the time that I really realized that there was another way other than just going to your doctor and having him prescribe you a cream or, or just kind of look at you like, well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Something's wrong. Be like, yeah, tell me about it. I know something's wrong. So um, I think what's, what has happened, though, in, in, our, in our world today, especially in civilized countries who have, uh, you know, a plethora of medical institutions, doctors all over the place. I mean, we've, in our magazines, we have every 10th or 15th page, there's like a big three-page spread for some kind of pharmaceutical drug that is going to treat your child's ADHD or your husband's erectile dysfunction or your suicidal depression that your teenager's having or um, you're going to need to inoculate your teen, your young teen daughters because they're going to get venereal warts and then they're going to get cancer. So, I mean, you know, it's just in our face all the time. I mean, every night when if you flip on the television, if I see that, oh, Viagra, I can't sing, but if I see Viagra and that couple getting out of the boat and playfully walking up to the beach cottage, I mean, if I see that one more time, I'm going to puke. Because if it were only that easy, you know, if it were only that easy to make that happen. But um, so holistic medicine versus westernized medicine. The one thing I have to say in western medicine's um, 
Oh, I, sometimes I just get so tongue tied on these videos. It's so odd speaking to a camera. But in its defense, I will say that if I get into a car accident and I have my arm partially hanging from the socket, I want somebody to get me to a hospital ASAP. And I want a medical doctor, preferably a plastic surgeon, who's trained in sewing my arm back on with the least amount of nerve damage and scarring. I don't want to go to a shaman out in the middle of Peru somewhere and have them have me smoke the peace pipe when my arm is falling off. You know, I, I really want the doctor there. So modern medicine has its place, and holistic natural health has its place as well. And I think that um, I'd really like to hear from you what your opinions are, what your experiences are. Um, where are you in your mind shift right now? Are you still... Um, are you still feeling like, I mean, just, I don't know. How are you feeling? Are you feeling like it's time for you to harness and take more control over your personal health? For example, you know, you're, are you realizing more about these foods that I've been eating for the majority of my childhood and adult life? Maybe that's the reason why I'm sick. Or maybe some of my lifestyle practices like, well, I never get out in the sun, and I sit all day long, and I don't really get any exercise, and I'm in some relationships that are pretty toxic and stressing me out. And, oh, by the way, my job stinks. I mean, I'm stressed out every day. I don't sleep well at night. I mean, are you starting to think that maybe some of that in your lifestyle is contributing to your weight gain, to your whatever symptoms that you've been having, your exhaustion, and really maybe your overall poor attitude and your lack of willpower? I mean, you know, if all these things are kind of, you know, sweltering in your life, it's really hard to be whistling Dixie, you know? So let me hear from you, and, and, and it's really, this is a great time to get a discussion going on this forum because I know a lot of you have really strong opinions about this, so I think we could get into a really good discussion. And I just want to thank you guys for chiming in and watching these videos every day. I mean, I know that I can tell by the numbers that a lot of you are actually watching what I have to say every day and commenting. It just, it really makes it all come together for me. And it really helps inspire me to try to be your leader and try to collect information and gather things together that are going to be helpful for everybody. I've made some changes today on the website, nothing real visual, but um, at the top where the tabs are, I've added a new tab with a little bit more information about actually what we're doing on this experiment, and I've added some more recipes. So we're always a work in progress here. I'm very open to your suggestions and ideas, and if anybody has any questions that they need to ask me, you can either send me a direct message, you can leave a comment on my page, or you can put a comment on this thread uh, especially if it's a question that you think would be helpful to the group in its entirety. So, again, thanks for being here. I hope you guys have a rest. The rest of your day is really successful. I hope you have a fabulous next meal that's 100% raw if you can. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.